Hey guys, Uncle Ray. Welcome to another episode of the Crypto Bellwether. This is not clickbait. I want to say right out of the gate, I own XRP. And quite frankly, I think one of the best trades for the next year or whenever the SEC rules is owning XRP. Now, that being said, the reason I created this video is I'm looking to open up a dialogue or maybe a debate on what I uncovered and the conclusions I came to. Now, I know a lot of you are going to get triggered and it's going to, they're going to hate on me in the comments, but I wish you wouldn't do that. Not that I care, but if you're going to insult me or criticize me in my thought process, why don't you do it with facts and uh, educate me what I am looking at? wrong because i'm not here to be right i just want to be correct in my thinking so i'll know what to do with my money and i can help others so before we get into that please hit that like button we're trying to grow this community and it helps us out a lot we want you to subscribe and join this community and at the end let me know what you think in the comment section especially on this video now let's get into it now guys, originally, when I went down the rabbit hole of hours and hours and hours of trying to understand XRP and Ripple and their relationship and what they were all about, I thought that uh, Ripple and XRP were going to be a world beater. And I truly believe that Ripple is. It's unbelievable what Ripple is creating. I believe in the banking reset. I'm almost positive, as positive as I can be, that that is a real thing. I also believe that Ripple is going to get its share, if not the lion's share, when that reset happens. Now, I don't know if they'll be able to maintain it, uh, you know, after, say, five years, because technology is changing so fast. Maybe the XRP ledger gets outdated. I don't know. But I am a firm believer that Ripple is going to be a world beater. And anyone investing in Ripple is like uh, Tesla or Amazon, Microsoft or Apple. I truly believe that. Now, that being said, originally, I thought that if they set up a payment system and that reset happens that pretty much every bank around the world, every payment um, you know, provider, everything is going to reset and change. Now, what I also thought was, we'll just take Bank of America, that once that reset happens, that Bank of America, just that one account, just imagine, uh, because I know Bank of America does have a relationship with Ripple. That just Bank of America globally, if they were all on the XRP ledger, I thought early on that they would have to go into the market and purchase XRP for every transaction and have a huge amount globally. And then once they burned up that XRP, they'd have to go buy more. And that's why I thought that XRP was going to hit some bizarre numbers well then when i saw uh the report come out at the first of the year of the numbers that ripple uh made i mean they made billions guys it was unbelievable when you check their growth but when you look at the xrp token it's just going down down and down so i dug really really deep guys and i made a video and i got a lot of hate and they were telling me i didn't understand what I was looking at, that I need to go look at the ODL and um, the cross-border payments and all that. So I did a really deep dive. And actually, it made me more leery of where XRP can go and way more bullish on Ripple. Now, bear with me. Uh, let me get my thoughts right. Um, let's see. Basically, I decided to stop 
looking at everything XRP because everything's positive. And no offense to the XRP army, but no one wants to even have a conversation if something seems to be negative about XRP. I don't like that. I, I'm non biased, guys, and I just want factual information, and I'll figure out the rest from there. Now, once I started studying Ripple, I got more and more and more impressed. I got to tell you guys, Brad is an absolute world beater. He really is. And he's very, very smart. But from what I can tell, and I'm going to justify this as this goes on, is that, you know, Brad is basically setting up Ripple to have two IPOs. The first one was the ICO, which funded. Uh, Ripple and XRP, right, right? And it gave them the resources to make this huge undertaking possible. And Brad and uh, Ripple made a huge amount of money, and so did a lot of the early people in XRP. Now, that being said, the, the biggest thing that Brad is trying to do, the roadmap for Ripple, uh, from an outsider looking in, is that he is going to take Ripple public, and he's using the XRP resources to do that. Now, guys, I know you don't know my background, but I used to work for Bear Stearns, which back in the day was like Goldman Sachs and uh, J.P. Morgan. So I do have a background in banking and finance. I've been in it for over 30 years, from trading foreign currencies, commodities, coffee, sugar, cocoa, real estate, day trading. I've done it all for whatever that's worth. So anyway, as I dug into it, guys, I realized that Ripple is set up for about 98% of all the profits. From Ripple and XRP to get funneled into Ripple. They're going to build it up. They're going to create those relationships. And when it gets turns into an absolute powerhouse, they're going to go public. And quite frankly, Brad, because of Ripple, not XRP, will probably be on the Forbes 100 list. I wouldn't doubt it at all. Now, here's my first point that I didn't like. And it verifies that no one really needs to own XRP. Let's watch something. So, um, effectively, Ripple will fund uh, your, our wallet, the wallets of our senders. And we'll basically place XRP in those wallets until you're ready to use it. Um, you don't own the XRP until you use it. So that's a really important uh, thing to call out because as we fund those wallets, Ripple still effectively owns the XRP in that wallet, which means that there's no subject, there's no volatility. You're not subject to the volatility in XRP. The only, the only time that uh, XRP is used is when a transaction moves over the network. So step one on wallet set is that Ripple funds that wallet with XRP. Um, when you're ready to actually make a payment over the network, we basically take the XRP out of that wallet and we send it to a receiver exchange. That exchange then exchanges that, uh, that XRP into local fiat, and that local fiat is delivered to our, our receiving partners. Um, and once that actually occurs, um, then it's sent out to the beneficiaries. The reason why this is important, again, is because you don't have any pre-funding mechanism on the front end. You don't have any pre-funding uh, mechanism on the back end. And ultimately, what we do is we'll invoice you um, at a, a few days later uh, for the sale of that XRP. So that, that XRP is uh, done on a spot rate basis. So in real time, as you're actually about to initiate the payment, we'll give you a quote uh, for what that USD or EUR or whatever your home, home currency is. 
conversion into XRP, and then we'll move that over the over the XRP ledger, make that conversion into uh, destination fiat. Hopefully, y'all understood that, guys. So basically, what he's saying is, all those banks, Bank of America, everyone else, they do not have to own XRP. When it, when Ripple sets up these new accounts, they put XRP in a wallet which doesn't have to be a big amount and then when the transaction occurs they basically within guys we're talking about seconds so they have to basically borrow uh on loan xrp for the matter of seconds boom 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 they get a bill they get a bill a transaction fee from ripple and they are filling those wallets from the uh, ripple supply they do not have to go into the market as it sits right now because of how much xrp ripple owns they don't have to go into the market and so there is nothing to pump an xrp token but ripple is making a huge amount of profit now let's take a look at something else if you understand the odl uh, and how it works. Basically, Ripple sets up an account. They open up a wallet. They have XRP. The bank, Bank of America, none of those banks need to own XRP. When they do the transaction, it's all done simultaneously and really, really fast, almost instant, right? So then they get a bill for the fees. Now, this chart that you're looking and i got to give a shout out to crypto erie she's overseas uh this just proves another point about how much people do not need to buy uh, xrp and store it so there's not going to be a huge uh market of you know huge mega corporations and banks going in and buying the token what you're looking at now, this is in Japanese. She had to explain it to me. But one of the guys that is heavily involved in, he's a well to make it simple in uh, Ripple. He wanted to create pretty much the same thing. This is layman's terms, guys. The same kind of ODL situation between Japan and Asia. So, if you look at what you're looking at on the screen, guys, uh, look what he did. This is basically like his bank in Asia or J uh, Japan or wherever it is. But here's he wants to be like a bank's bank. That's where they're going to buy XRP. All these other areas, banks, uh, merchants, whatever, all of these guys are just going to be routed through there so the point i'm making is he's bringing huge cross-border payments into the xrp ledger which like i said before i assume that every banker every merchant every person had to own xrp and go into the market and that was going to make that uh xrp token pump well He's going to kind of do the same ODL thing. He wants to store the XRP and all those payments between Japan and Asia just funnel through his banks. And then they also are on the XRP ledger. I'm guessing he's going to, you know, kind of scalp, uh, scalp the uh, market by being the middleman. That's where he's going to make most of his fees. That's just an educated guess. But that's just uh, proving a point for whatever that's worth. Now, uh, bear with me for a second. Uh, the next thing that I want to bring to your attention, guys, is this lady. This lady is way up in Ripple. Now, listen to what she had to say in this interview. It's quite telling. So just um, for those that may not be familiar, just to you know, clarify, Ripple is the company and... Uh, RippleNet is the payments network that you know we've developed over the last few years, leveraging crypto and blockchain to address a lot of the inefficiencies uh, in the in the payments network today, particularly in the cross-border payments. 
how important is it that XRP um, stays one of the top tokens for this to work? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, again, I would say we're not, you know, really so much focused on the particular sort of price of XRP or the volatility or any other coin particularly. That so, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it has a higher or lower market cap. So, if we look at our, again, on the on-demand liquidity solution, RippleNet, where we are using XRP as a bridge currency, right, to move fiat, you know, around the world, right? Um, that is, you know, regardless of the price of so it. All that matters is how many there are. Doesn't matter what the price is. It's, it's, yeah, it's a bridge that we are using as a bridge. So um, it's not, you know, we're not here really to honestly like speculate and, and um, it's, you know, it's a means to an end, it's a means to bring that efficiency to the market. Well, think about what she just said, guys. It's a means to an end. Now, that, in my opinion, proves the point that uh, Ripple should win the SEC case. Because one of the biggest things that the SEC has tried to push uh, in the ruling is that the reason it's a security is the expectation of profit. Well, she's telling you it's basically a stable coin. It's a means to an end. It's just the way that they can do cross-border payments and give instant liquidity around the world. Now, in my opinion, by her saying that it's a means to an end, it's basically like a stable coin. And there's no profit to be had. XRP, not Ripple, is not drumming up huge fees or making a profit and are doing anything for the token to pump. The only reason XRP will ever pump, at least the way it's set up now, is because of speculation. That's it. Now, um, from my opinion, uh, even if it pumps from the speculation, we know that Ripple is going to dump and uh, make it hard for uh, XRP to ever maintain a rally. Now, that being said, I think it could easily hit five to ten dollars after the SEC ruling, especially if they win. All bets are off if they lose. I don't know what to happen. But even if it rallies to say five dollars or maybe ten dollars, in my opinion, it's going to be very short lived. Now I have another quick question. For whatever it's worth, being the uh, the way the tokenomics and the governance is set up, Ripple basically controls everything that happens, whether you agree or not. That's a fact. If they want to vote something in tomorrow, they'll make it happen. So what is uh, stopping them if they need more tokens to, you know, create more tokens and give it to Ripple? I don't know. Just a question. Again, stop with the hate and please educate me uh, why they can't do that if they can't. Now. That's all I got for you guys for the most part. I went down the rabbit hole. I spent a lot of time. But from what I can tell, uh, Ripple is 100% set up to take advantage of everything XRP does. If we as token owners happen to make a profit, well, good on us. But that's not the intent. Now, another thing, guys, you got to remember. I come from the banking, the big institutional banking background. Brad is a world beater. He's a lot smarter than probably all of us watching this and including me combined. I mean, the man's hugely intelligent. Now, if he can set up a system, this is just common sense, guys. Never underestimate the other man's greed. If he can set up a system where Ripple wins and wins and wins say 98% of the time or he could set up a system that 
you could win 50% of the time and the rest go to the token owner, owners like me and you. He's not going to do that. He's going to set it up for him to win, for the foundation to win, for Ripple to win when it goes public. That's the way I see it, guys. And again, if you're going to hate on me, please educate me. You're better than that. I get hate all the time when I just go down the rabbit hole and come up with a conclusion. This is just my conclusion, but it has questions. That's why I created this video. So if I'm wrong, if you think I'm wrong, correct me with um, facts that I can verify. Educate me where I'm wrong in my thought process. Tell me why XRP should pump. What is it doing? Stand alone. Not Ripple, because Ripple's in the news every single day. I just did a video about how they uh, there's an app in Canada that's using the ledger for Bitcoin. It's hugely possible, uh, positive, and it's a great account. However, from everything I look at, it has nothing to do with the XRP token. It's not going to rally from it. It didn't rally from it. There was news that just came out with, uh, I think it's called the FOMO app. Uh, I think it's in Singapore. I just read it in passing. That's a huge account. But again, it's using the ledger. We're not pumping from that news. Why? Because that's profit that Ripple is going to make. So here's my conclusion. Everything about Ripple and XRP is set up for Ripple to win. Ripple's going to go public, and it's going to be a world beater. I have no doubt about it. Buy the stock. If you're an accredited investor, which that uh, really sucks for the average person because they can't buy Ripple. But if you can, buy Ripple because it is going to be a, a world beater. In my opinion, my educated guess is Two, three, four years from now, XRP, XRP will be pretty much a stable coin for the bank and payment section during that reset. How long that lasts, how long they dominate, I don't know. But guys, this is not to be negative on XRP. I just really believe that Ripple is a world-beating corporation. It's going to be massive. It is going to be like a Tesla, like I said, or an Amazon or uh, Google, it's going to be massive. But in my opinion, XRP, the token, is not going to go along for the ride. I hear stuff like it's going to hit $100. I've even heard $50,000. Guys, justify that. Take your emotions out of it and tell me why I'm wrong. Anyway, guys, like I said, I want, I'm excited about um, Everything crypto right now I really am, but I'm here to learn. So that's all I got for you guys. If you haven't, mash that like button. Please do so. Subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comment sections. If I'm missing the boat, please let me know. Now, also, last thing if you know a developer or someone on the inside of um, uh, Ripple or XRP that could really educate me even more than I can learn myself, Pass this on to them. Share this video. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Take care.